Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to start part two of a series on improving the ruler skills on the Woodland Mills HM122 sawmill. Um, last week in part one, which I'll link uh, up here, um, we put a new ruler on the sawmill, a new uh, window pointer to improve the uh, clarity and accuracy and really the usability and readability of the the ruler skill on the sawmill. And that's the primary way that I use the sawmill. Um, I'm kind of old school. I like the rulers. They're very productive for me. And so that's going to be my main way of using the sawmill. Uh, but today in part two, we're going to put a digital readout or a DRO or a DRO on, on the sawmill, which is going to give us uh, a digital reading of the height of the blade uh, above the saw bed. And um, as I mentioned in that previous video, I'm not really um, that crazy about uh, DROs. Uh, I've used them on uh, wood misers. They make a really nice DRO, uh, very focused on lumber production. And that's a really good setup. Um, but I've been less enthusiastic about putting low-cost DROs on these hobby sawmills. Um, so this is kind of going to be a test to see um, how well they work, how easy they are to install. And then over the next few months, um, you know, how well the, the DRO does, how long, how it holds up uh, in the sawmill environment. So uh, stick around and we will get started. Okay, so here's the drill that I purchased. This is an eye gauging easy view drill, and this was $55 on eBay for uh, the drill with the 24 inch slide. Uh, they have longer versions and shorter versions, but uh, for the HM122, 24 inch uh, works out to be just about perfect, both in terms of the range of the sawmill and then uh, installation, as we'll see in a couple minutes. Uh, so, this is what comes in the box we've got the slide, uh, the sensor. Uh, some hardware it comes with four batteries the unit takes uh, two at a time i believe they're 2032 um, button type batteries and then we have a mounting arm and a, a mounting base uh, for the the digital readout um, and this happens to have magnets on the back and so that's going to be the primary way i'll attach it to the sawmill um, and then they give some instructions really basic instructions um, you're kind of on your own with with most of this um, uh, but they do give a little bit of guidance on uh, what some of the buttons on the unit do. Uh, and, and you can see right now I've got this set to read out in fractions of an inch. And you can set it to read out in 30 seconds, 60 fourths, and 128 of an inch. Uh, and that's going to be based on the accuracy of the sensor and the slide here. And, you know, obviously uh, even a 30 second of an inch is probably a little bit overkill for a sawmill. Uh, so certainly you wouldn't want to set it to 64ths or 128ths, um, and, and so I'll be leaving it on um, 30 seconds of an inch. Uh, but this has some, some pretty nice functionality to it. Uh, my only complaint about this is that it only has one reading at a time, and this particular unit will let you toggle between an absolute reading and then an incremental reading, uh, which you could use... Um, if you're slicing off boards, you could keep hitting the increment button and keep dropping the blade by board thickness. And it'd be nice to see the incremental reading and the absolute reading at the same time. Uh, but in this case, you're gonna have to choose one or the other. So that's kind of a minor uh, inconvenience. Okay, so when installing a drill on a sawmill or another piece of machinery, um, you, you really just need to mount uh, the slide and the sensor so that you're detecting motion along the axis of interest. It's, it's, it's pretty simple. And uh, you can really mount it so that the sensor moves or the slide moves. One of the two has to be fixed to a reference frame, uh, but the other one can move. And then you're gonna detect relative motion between the two and, and it's gonna be displayed on the readout. And so when uh, I was looking over the sawmill here, um, there's a couple places you could mount this and you could mount it in ways that you know, the slide moves or the sensor moves. Um, but I kept coming back to the fact that uh, Woodland Mills has a real nice bracket set up here uh, for their ruler. Um, in fact, let's come around the other side. Um, you can see I have the ruler on it, but they have this um, really nice uh, mounting rail for the magnetic rulers to go on and then a, a, a fixture up here to mount the pointer on. And you can see the new one we uh, installed in the last video here. Um, and so I kept coming back to this thinking, well, heck, they've already got a pretty, pretty good setup here to mount something that's long and straight, uh, with an indicator fixed on one end. And so what I decided to do is, uh, let's go back around to this side 
is I'm going to mount the slide uh, to the back side of this uh, uh, ruler rail and there's actually a hole up here at the top and I'm going to use that hole and then drill another one down at the bottom and I will mount the slide uh, to this ruler rail and then um, uh, fabricate a bracket so that I can mount the draw sensor to be fixed off of the same bracket used uh, for the uh, ruler pointer and um, I think that's just going to work out to be the quickest, uh, easiest and also take advantage of uh, what's already here on the mill in terms of uh, hardware to, to kind of minimize what uh, I need to do. And so um, let me uh, rearrange the camera here and we'll, we'll step through uh, some of how I want to fit this onto the mill. All right, so I got the GoPro rigged up here. Hopefully that you'll be able to see what uh, I'm doing. Uh, first thing I did was I flipped uh, the uh, end brackets on the uh, draw rail around the other way so this can mount with the sensor side facing inward. I think that's just better for protection. Um, and um, um, it'll work the same either way, but um, I think that's just going to be a better arrangement overall. And so I'm just going to work this up in here and behind my lube hose and throttle cable and get it lined up with a hole. And I'm just going to stick a screw up there just to hold it in place. And um, I guess I'll put a, a nut on there just to be safe. Uh, eventually, when I do mount this permanently, I'll be using nylon lock nuts. Um, you know, sawmills vibrate. And there's a lot of shaking going on that likes to knock hardware loose and so it makes sense to use those nylon uh, lock nuts whenever possible and so um, you know this 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 is a pretty nice fit of, of the uh, the rail on the drill into the back side of this ruler guide and uh, I slide the uh, sensor unit up um, there's room for the wire and I'll be able to put a, a bracket between uh, uh, the sensor and um, the uh, fixture bracket for the uh, ruler pointer. So I think that's going to work out uh, uh, pretty well. By the way, uh, when you're planning this out on any sawmill, um, you want to make sure that there's enough range of motion in your mounting of the drill rail and, and sender so that you don't bottom out the, the, the drill rail uh, or, or the, the sensor uh, unit on the rail at any point in the travel of the mill going up or down that would be bad That's going to put pressure on it probably break it at the very least. It's going to uh, Mess up your measurements and throw off your your calibration. So uh, I've got the saw head um, Down pretty much as low as it goes. I think there's another quarter inch. It can go lower but uh, I just wanted to make sure that uh, when I'm eyeballing this mounting setup uh, that I will have enough room to accommodate the full range of, of the saw head uh, up and down. So I started at the low end, uh, which is actually going to be the high end uh, on the ruler because we have zero at the top. And uh, this shows me that I've got enough room to uh, mount this sender um, up near this uh, pointer bracket uh, without uh, bottoming anything out um, on the drill. And so really, I think the next step is going to be um, uh, eyeball this to be parallel with the 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 ruler um, and uh, mark a hole for the uh, bottom end of of, of the drill draw slide um, and uh, drill that hole and I can put another screw um, in the bottom. So um, I'll change the camera around again and we will uh, show those parts next. Okay, so I've come back and um, put the uh, draw slide uh, back on the uh, back side of, of the uh, ruler guide on the sawmill and put a uh, nut and bolt um, down at the bottom. You can, we're looking at there. I've left this uh, loose. Um, and then uh, uh, similar at the top, 
uh, got uh, uh, that uh, put in with a nut bolt and washer, uh, also left a little bit loose. And so uh, really at this point, we just need to fabricate a bracket that's gonna attach um, this, this uh, sending unit that has the sensor inside of it uh, somewhere over to a fixed point on the sawmill. And I can take advantage of a bunch of different bolts here um, to do that. Um, and this has uh, several uh, uh, holes in it with uh, threaded inserts. And so uh, we, got, we got plenty of places we can mount to. And so uh, really at this point, I'm just gonna start looking through my uh, uh, junk pile, see if I have any um, uh, metal brackets or uh, uh, other, other scrap pieces that I can uh, adapt uh, to uh, work up a bracket uh, for, for the sending unit. All right, so I found this bracket in uh, one of my junk piles that I think is going to work just fine. Um, it reaches over to the sending unit on the uh, drill and then uh, comes comes over here and and uh, I can open up this hole so that it uh, catches the bolt hole here on the, the sawmill frame. So I think that's going to work out pretty good. Uh, I won't have to leave the house to, to get things working with this piece. So... Um, just gonna start marking things up and uh, uh, make some holes in it.
All right, so I have everything um, uh, loosely fit uh, here. Uh, I got a nice fit between this bracket and the sending unit. Um, a good fit here at the sawmill frame uh, where I had a I had to hog out the existing hole in this bracket just because I'm using uh, an old bracket. If you're if you're doing this custom, you can you know um, make this a better fit, fit from the start. But uh, I just enlarged the uh, slot that was already in this bracket. And then I put a big washer here um, that'll help hold this down uh, nice and snug up to the frame. So um, I think I'm at the point now where I'm going to snug up uh, this guy. I left these a little bit loose and of course the, the entire slide is still um, uh, loose. Um, and I'll, I'll leave that loose until I make a final adjustment. And then at the very end, uh, once everything's good, I'm going to come back and pull these screws out. Um, put some blue Loctite on them and uh, then snug them back in. But I think this takes care of really the bulk of the work of uh, fabricating this bracket up here. Um, uh, came out real good and I was able to take advantage of an ex existing bolt on the frame. Um, I made this mount so that it's independent of the pointer mount for the ruler so I can adjust those two separately if I want to. In fact, that'll be important because I probably will adjust one off of the other at some point um, so anyways we're, we're done with this part and I'm just gonna uh, tap this bolt back through and uh, tighten it back up and um, kind of tie things uh, tie up any loose ends and uh, we're ready to go to the next step okay so I just finished up uh, to me one of the key steps of, of putting a drill on a sawmill no matter how you do your mounting and uh, that is to, to, you know, with the fasteners loose, let everything relax into a natural position where it's aligned with the vertical motion of the sawmill. Um, because, you know, I'm out here building this with hand tools. I mean, I, I did as good as I could, but it's not perfect. And um, uh, so it's very important to, to let, keep things loose and, and, and let them relax into a final alignment with the vertical motion of the saw head before tightening all the fasteners down. So. Uh, basically what I did was I put the, uh, I cranked the sawmill up until the uh, sending unit and bracket was right in the middle of the range of the slide. Um, and then uh, just kind of gave it a gentle jiggle um, you know, back and forth until I could tell it was set in, settling into a nice plumb position where everything was lined up, where the slide was lined up with the angle of the, the bracket and the sending unit. And uh, then I snugged the fasteners down uh, top and bottom of the slide and uh, then took these screws out, put blue Loctite on them and snug those down too. Um, and then I've cranked everything up and down again, nice, nice smooth motion, no binding. So to me, that's a key step, no matter how you do this mounting, uh, just let it relax into position, check it. You know, you wanna make sure that the uh, slide and the motion of the sending unit along the slide is very closely parallel to your up and down motion of the sawmill. So uh, nothing sticks uh, or binds as you use this. So I think that's gonna wrap up the uh, mechanical install of the DRO. Uh, really the last step now is to clean up the wiring, run the wiring, and then mount the, the uh, readout unit somewhere where I can see it while I'm operating the mill. So let me switch the camera around and we'll get to that part next. All right, so I have the wiring all run and everything tidied up. I ended up using a piece of uh, split loom tubing to um, uh, protect the wire. Um, mainly I was concerned about right here where as the uh, ruler guide goes up and down, it would have been rubbing, but um, I ended up carrying that split loom tubing all the way um, um, down the run of the wire, as you can see. It comes up um, behind the ruler, then runs down uh, the frame and I've uh, bunched up the slack wiring here. Um, and then if we come around the uh, back side of the mill, uh, this is where I've got it mounted. 
and um, it's got a magnetic uh, mount on the back, which it seems pretty pretty strong, but it's it's so slippery back here. I suspect I'm going to need to put some double-sided tape on that to really uh, keep it from sliding around when the uh, mill is running and everything's vibrating. But, uh, you know, I'll wait and, and see if, if that's the case. But, yeah, I got the wire poking through the opening in the frame here. They did build a little strain relief into the uh, case here um, to keep... Uh, pressure off of that USB connector, I assume. And so I, um, even though I had to change things around a little bit, I am using that. Uh, so there's a loop in the wire and um, no direct pressure on that connection. Um, so I went ahead and um, uh, set it up. And I think in some of my earlier videos, I talked about how I have calibration blocks uh, for the mill. And I use these um, with string lines to true up the, the uh, sawmill bed. Uh, use it to check level, use it to do a lot of things because the uh, steel uh, tubing here they use for the bunks, it's it's got a rounded edge and it's, sometimes it's got a low spot in the middle. And so what I've found is, is I, if I'm going to do any critical measurements, I really need to put a nice flat piece of wood over the top. So I put the, one of my calibration uh, blocks on there. That's uh, been very carefully sanded to exactly one and a half inches. And then I just ran the blade up and um, adjusted the height of the saw head until the bottom tooth. Because, you know, saw, uh, saw blade teeth, uh, they're, they're um, set up and down alternating. There's usually one in the middle, then one up, one down, or some variation like that. And it's the tooth pointing down, which kind of sets the height of the wood that's left off of the bunk after the blade passes through. And so uh, I uh, set the height so that that lower or that bottom uh, tooth was just grazing this calibration block and uh, then I came around back and uh, set my ruler exactly at one and a half inches and then I set the draw at one and a half inches using uh, uh, this preset function here um, which is what it uses when you push the zero button normally you know when you think of zeroing something you go to zero but in this case, we can't actually lower the blade all the way to the bunk. Um, and so we need to pick some height off of the bunk to use as our zero reference. And so I just chose one and a half because it matches my calibration blocks. So um, after I zeroed my ruler up here, came down here, set the preset at one and a half, and then pushed the zero button here, and it snapped it to one and a half. And uh, I've been cranking this up and down, and I'm seeing really nice repeatability, really great agreement between the, the dro and our improved ruler that we did in the last video, um, which is good. Um, one of my goals for that ruler was to be able to get very, very precise readings, uh, which it does. Uh, you can see uh, the line is just really nice and sharp and the, the scale is nice and sharp, so I can get very nice, clear readings on that. And uh, um, after cranking this up and down, I'm seeing really good agreement with uh, the DRO as well. So that's gonna wrap up the part two video uh, where I went through the installation of the drill. And again, just uh, you know, one of the key points I think is uh, if you can take advantage of some existing protected um, mounting location on your sawmill, no matter what the brand, I think that's gonna make for a better result. So in my case, I was able to really hide this um, uh, drill slide and uh, sender unit with a sensor in it right back behind the uh, ruler guide. It's it's tucked in there, it's out of the way. Uh, furthermore, I was able to flip uh, the, the sensor side of the slide inward. And that'll protect it, hopefully keep it clean from any flying sawdust or lubricant, anything else. Th those are all things that could mess it up over time. So I think flipping it inward is a, is a plus. And um, you know, this just worked out to be a very convenient mounting location on the HM122. And you know, I've looked at the HM126 and the HM130 mills. Uh, I think you can mount it the same way, but you know, this is kind of a, uh, something I, I think people should do on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, you know, when I before I got ready to do this, I looked at a few videos on YouTube, and everybody's done this differently. So I don't think there is a single right way. Um, I'm just trying to show you some of the the reasons I chose this location and uh, you know how I th thought it worked out conveniently for the bracket and for protecting uh, the dro. So uh, that's going to wrap things up for uh, part two in our series. 
what I want to do is uh, once I get into sawing with this, uh, come back and um, we'll we'll make a part three, which so shows the usage, how it compares to the ruler, and um, we'll we'll see how this works out over time. So as always, thanks for watching.